Lucy Shaw and welcome back to The Sewing Room. Uh, in this class I'm taking a break from investment mending to show you how to put patches on trousers with holes in the knees. Essential knowledge for any mother of small children. You can actually buy iron-on patches. These don't need to be stitched on. You can iron them on and they should stay even after washing and wearing. But if you'd like a more hand-stitched look then this tutorial is for you. So we're going to use upholstery fabric and bonder web and a sewing machine to create patches which we'll machine stitch on which will elevate your high street trousers into an heirloom piece. So first of all you'll need to cut your patches to the correct size. The hole on these trousers is about an inch square but I'm going to make the patch a lot bigger than that because the fabric around the hole is quite weak so we want to not only cover the hole but make sure the, the fabric around it is strengthened and will stand up to some use. So I'm going to make my patches about four inches square. I've actually cut them already. Here they are. I've fussy cut these. Fussy cutting is when you, instead of cutting out your fabric in the most economical way, you choose a, a, a place where there's a particularly nice piece of pattern and make sure you've got that in. So I fussy cut these to about the right size and I've also cut to the same size my bonder web. I'm going to fuse the bonder web to the patches on the wrong side. Bonder web is a double-sided iron-on adhesive and it does the job that tacking used to do. There's a paper side and a glue side. I've turned the iron up to maximum because this is obviously a strong cotton fabric and I'm putting the shiny gluey side onto the wrong side of my patch. It's quite important to have the bonder web the same shape and size as the patch uh, because otherwise the bonder web might stick to the ironing mat. So there we are. Now when you're ready you can attach the patch to the trousers by peeling off the backing paper and positioning the patch in place. It won't stick down until you heat it with the iron so you can play with it a bit. If you've got a big hole it might make sense to position the paper on the inside of the trouser leg just to make sure that it doesn't stick to the back of the trousers. The great advantage of bonder web is that it doesn't only stick your patch in place so that it stays still while you're machining it down, but it also stiffens it, so it should make the trousers a little bit more durable. If you're fussy about the exact positioning of the uh, patch, you might want to measure to make sure that they are level with each other. This is less of an issue with these trousers because the patches are different shapes to make it look more, more funky. Um, with, a, with a patch that has straight edges I want, you want to make sure that it's uh, lining up with the straight of grain and on corduroy trousers that's quite easy you just line it up with the rib of the fabric. If you haven't got a directional fabric like that use the outside seam on the trouser leg. When you're ready use the iron to fuse the patches to the trouser legs. In order to machine stitch these in place, we're going to have to unpick part of the trouser leg seam because it's impossible to get access to that up this narrow opening. It's usually the inside leg seam that you want to unpick, but you'll need to check if there's a top stitch seam on the trousers, and there isn't on these, but on this pair of trousers it's very obvious. There's a top stitch seam and an untop stitched seam. Don't unpick the top stitched seam because there'll be a lot more unpicking to do and it's harder to make it look neat afterwards when you put it all back together again. So always unpick the free seam. So we're going to unpick the inside uh, leg of these trousers. So oops, I'm going to turn them inside out. I can see more or less where I need to start unpicking because of where the, I can see the hole. 
it's going to need to be several inches long. It needs to be a gap that extends at least two inches beyond the end of each patch so that you've got manoeuvrable room for your sewing machine. You'll see that there are two sets of stitching here. There's the overlocked edge and there's also um, a straight running stitch. And you'll need to unpick both of those and unpicking overlocking is always rather painful because there are so many threads and it's worth taking the time to pick all the loose hairy bits of thread off before you start stitching. With trousers that have been worn and washed a lot this, the machine stitches get sort of fossilised into place and it can be really quite difficult to unpick them. They can be difficult to see as well. But these trousers in fact aren't that old, so I can still see the threads and then they've got a bit of looseness. You can really have fun at this point using some of the stitches that you never normally use or you can just use a zigzag it's up to you I've got quite a nice blanket stitch on here so this stitch resembles a blanket stitch and I'm gonna use that to put a nice neat finish on what on this raw edge I'm using a matching thread but you can have fun with them um, contrasting threads as well if you're if that's all you've got or if you're in the mood Because I only unpicked um, as much as I needed to on the inside leg, it is a little bit tight stitching round. So every so often I have to stop in order to free up the bit of patch I'm about to stitch. So I'm not accidentally stitching two layers of trouser together. Now to keep this patch really neat and to prevent the stitches coming unpicked I'm going to thread these threads on the top through to the wrong side and knot them before cutting them off rather than just cutting them off here which might mean they'd start fraying. So I'm just going to thread an ordinary sewing needle and pull it through to the other side. So I now have four threads on the wrong side. The two bobbin threads and the top threads. And I'm just going to tie them in a knot together. So now the patch is completely stitched on and secured. I'm going to turn the trouser leg the wrong way out again in order to replace the stitches that I took out earlier. I'm going to pin these down. I'm going to pin at right angles to the stitching line so that I can just stitch over the pins without taking them out. 
I'm just simply going to use a straight stitch to stitch from just before where I started um, unpicking and then overlap at the other end with the beginning of the stitching line on the other side. Don't forget to change your stitch before you start otherwise uh, you'll have a rather interesting result on your inside seam. I'm changing the thread to a matching colour for optimal results but if you do use a different colour unless it's really startlingly different it probably won't be noticeable. As I'm um, not securing the stitches in any other way it's really important to go forwards and backwards before you start to make sure those stitching line won't come undone. And now I'm simply following the stitching line that was there before and I can see the holes so I'm just retracing the previous steps, that were there, stitches that were there. off at this point. Now if you have an overlocker then obviously you can overlock the edge again but if you haven't then just use an ordinary zigzag to replace that overlocking stitch that was there before. And this will cover up all your raw edges and make it reasonably neat. There you are. One completed trouser patch. So all you need to do now is wait for the compliments on your thrift and sustainability and style to roll in. Mm -hmm.